at Worship Online, and thank you for continuing to make this a part of your spiritual journey. If you find this short worship encouraging and helpful in your week, please take a moment to share a link with your friends and your family. Again, we're glad that you're here. As we move towards and through this Advent towards Christmas, I'd like to remind you that if you're in the Denver metro area, we do have a food cart that's set outside front in front of the church each day, sometime between 10 and about 4 or 5. Your food donations to the cart go to Integrated Community Family Services. If you're in another part of the country, I would encourage you to find an opportunity to share, if you are able, whatever food items you can with any organization. And as we move towards the end of the year, your continuing support of this ministry and, of, and congregation is always thankful and helpful. Many congregations and ministries have been challenged in these post-COVID and inflationary times in Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit is no different. We encourage in our life together a life of faithfulness and generosity. It's part of how we live out our faith. And thank you again for your gifts. Also, any time if you're in the Denver metro area, uh, our services on Sunday are at 9 o'clock, and you are always welcome and invited to participate with the community as a whole. Now I'd like to invite you to light a candle in your space as a visible symbol and a reminder of the Holy Spirit's presence and partnership in our lives and in our work in the world. Stir up your power and come. This phrase, it's a quote from Psalm 80. It's going to begin our prayers of the day each week throughout Advent. Advent is the season of expecting, the season of the coming days. As one waits expectantly for a child to be born, during this season we eagerly await God's presence with us. As we prepare for Christmas, was what does the coming of Christ mean to you? And how does God's presence change your life? In this season of waiting and longing for God's presence, we watch, we wait, we dream, and we pray. In our private lives, we watch for engaging relationships. In our neighborhoods, we pray for a sense of cooperation and care. In our families, we wait for time and space to offer encouragement. In our nation, we dream of just opportunities for all. In our work, we watch for opportunities to engage in meaningful and enduring projects. In our world, we pray for peace. When will our prayers be answered? Come quickly, Lord Jesus, come.
we light the first Advent candle, we pray. Gracious God, let Advent begin again in us. May we find joy in new ways of connecting and celebrating. May we encourage one another even when we are discouraged. May we reimagine what these holidays mean and open ourselves to new and unexpected dreams. Amen. Stir up your power, O Christ. Come and wake us up. Wake us from drowsy living, neglectful relationships and the sedative of busyness. Awaken us to your presence, bend our angers to your peace, and enlighten us with your love. Amen. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from Isaiah, chapter 2. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, he shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is a unity within itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. The assembly of Israel to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls. And kindness within your towers. For the sake of my kindred and companions. I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God. I will seek to do you good. Our second reading is from Romans chapter 13. Besides this, you know what time it is. How it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, nor in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson today comes from the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and then they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken one will be left. 
Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, they would have stayed awake and would not have let their house be broken into. Therefore, you must also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, how does your time look between now and Christmas? Is your calendar for the next four weeks a jumble of musts? There are the musts of shopping, wrapping, shipping, delivering. Some still have the must of a Christmas letter and all those mailed Christmas cards. There is the tree to be bought or at least pulled out of the basement and set up, trimmed, and if it's a fresh one, watered every day. There's the outside decorating, and there's whatever baking you might choose to do. There's that Messiah concert and a family gathering that you really must plan and organize. There's that Advent wreath-making dinner and that caroling party the week before. There's the school holiday program, and then, of course, there's the office Christmas party. And we can't forget the gifts for the folks who help us get through, those people who cut our hair and the letter carrier and the garbage people. And in some places, there's the doorman or the super. And do not forget the people that you need to pick up at the airport. And just for good measure, please don't forget the loved ones who have December birthdays. Just say it. It's all there on your calendar, be it paper or in digital form. And it's all your time. And then, because this is church, there's God's time. It's all contained within the circle of the Advent wreath. The wreath with that first candle that we lit this week. It's the beginning of Advent, the beginning of the church year. That big wheel of time that every year turns us from the waiting of Advent to the joy of Christmas, to the waiting of Lent, and the joy of Easter, to the waiting of Eastertide, to the joy of Pentecost, to the joy of life in ordinary time, and then back again. So here's the span of God's time that we enter this week. This candle, it marks the beginning of the time that we spend with the prophet Isaiah, that prophet from the Hebrew scriptures, known and trusted and quoted by the writers of the New Testament. The light of this candle, it infuses today's readings. Isaiah implores the listeners to Walk in the light of the Lord into the kingdom where people do not learn how to make war, but instead they turn their energies towards cultivating the earth and not destroying it. Paul, in that second reading, echoes Isaiah's vision when he urges his listeners to wake up, to leave the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Paul also echoes what he had heard that Jesus said to his disciples, the, the words that Matthew attributes to him, keep awake, therefore. So next Sunday, we're going to light the first and the second candles, and Isaiah will return to us what will remind us what happens in the light. Growth, a green shoot from the dead stump, and Paul will remind us of Isaiah's prediction about that dead stump of David's line bearing new fruit in the person of this one Jesus. And John the Baptist, the one that Isaiah predicted would come, he's going to appear in the blinding sunlight of the desert. He's going to tell us to prepare the way for the one who will use water and fire to make us his own. 
And then that third week, on that third Sunday, when we light three candles, Isaiah will tell us about deserts that bloom, the blind who see, and the lame who leap. James is going to remind us in his letter that it takes time for the earth to bloom. He will use the prophets as examples of those who waited patiently for their faith to bear fruit. And Jesus will confirm John the Baptist's suspicions about him. Indeed, he is the one whom Isaiah predicted. Through him, the blind receive their sight and the, the lame walk and the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised and people hear the good news of the coming of the kingdom. And then on that fourth week, that fourth Sunday of Advent, four candles burn on this wheel, this wreath, and the promises will soon be fulfilled. Isaiah will tell us about a young woman who will give birth to a son and make him Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew will set Jesus' birth to Mary and Joseph in the light of Isaiah's prediction. Paul will tell the Romans that Jesus fulfills everything that the prophets promised us. And then finally, we'll light that center candle and on Christmas morning, we'll hear John begin his gospel with these mysterious and these powerful words. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us full of grace and truth. And so the circle of Advent time comes around again. But Advent, it's not a time when we go through the motions of remembering a story whose ending we already know. It's worth remembering that we begin our journey around this wheel this week with Jesus' own prediction of how he will come to us again. Advent. It's about Jesus coming once and promising to come again. This time of Advent, it's about the light shining in the darkness, but not obliterating the darkness. It's about the kingdom having already come near to us, but not yet, not completely having been fulfilled. There's much work left to be done, both in the next four weeks as, as well as well beyond that, well beyond the next four weeks. But you know what? Christmas always comes. Whether we get it all done, whether we get it all done perfectly or not, will the kingdom come in a similar inevitable way? What will we have done to hasten its coming in our lifetime? Will we recognize it when it does come? Who are we in the midst of that? Which farmer in the field? Which woman grinding meal? Will we go about our pre-Christmas tasks? marking out our time and forgetting about the Advent stories of God's time? Or perhaps, can we overlay these two arcs of time, God's time, our time, taking good care of the tasks that we'll make for a special holiday season and staying awake for the signs of the kingdom? God's time breaking into our time. Because it's not that we shouldn't enjoy the hustle and bustle of all the worldly traditions of the season with X number of days left until Christmas, even though some preachers and other religious leaders make good attempts to guilt us into thinking it's less than Christian to fall for this month's worth of commercialism. 
The narrative goes like this. There's this bad secular world of getting and spending which barely acknowledges or even notices the reason for the season. And on the other side of this deep, hard, thick, defined line is this other good world in which none of that goes on and into which the sweet baby Jesus is born properly, cleanly, to the sound of angels singing not cash registers ringing. Guess what? Last time I checked, that second world doesn't really exist. We only have one world, this world with which we live in. This world in which God finds us, God loves us, because that's who God is. And on the other hand, Jesus never asked us not to be human. Jesus became human and came into the chaos of this world to journey along with us. God with us. Jesus with us. In his writing in the book, The Price of the Ticket, James Baldwin writes, one must say yes to life and embrace it whenever it is found. And it is found in terrible places, nevertheless there it is. For nothing is fixed forever and forever and forever. It is not fixed. The earth is always shifting. The light is always changing. The sea does not cease to grind down rock. Generations do not cease to be born, and we are responsible to them because we are the only witnesses they have. The sea rises, the light falls, lovers cling to each other, and children cling to us. The moment we cease to hold each other, the moment we break faith with one another, the sea engulfs us the light goes out. In this season of Advent, as well as all throughout the year, we are called to embrace the other, the hungry, the discouraged, the immigrant, our brothers and sisters in the LGBTQIA plus community. We are called to embrace each other so that the light doesn't go out. What does that look like for you? And please know, God is with you always. And we can say thanks be to God for that.
as we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken us to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and custom to unite people of all faiths in your healing work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of wonder, the earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats, preserve the wild places, and protect endangered plants and animals. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, you judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. We pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth, in Ethiopia, and in Ukraine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who hunger. Comfort the grieving and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care. Today we lift up in prayer Craig, Roy, Nettie, and those that we name now with our lips or in our hearts. receive this blessing. May God, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, may this God bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God.